Hey guys, I figured I'd post a video on here um, in about, as you can see behind me, a Bungie 2 grinder. A uh, little bit of backstory here. I'm an owner of a coffee shop and I had a uh, dual grinder and it went down and then I found two of these Bun G2 grinders on eBay uh, for a good price and so we bought them and you know one worked for a while and then it shut down and then the other one worked for a while and it shut down and uh, so we ended up having to go and you know figure out, I, I decided well let me just take a look and see what needs to be repaired because now I have three dead grinders. Not being an electrician, uh, you know, I opened up the back of it and I found actually because I had fixed another grinder, an espresso grinder um, that we had and found that it was simply a capacitor and I was able to rehab that one and get it working uh, back no problem. I started looking for information on fixing the bun grinders and I could not find anything on anywhere about how to fix these machines. So uh, not being an electrician or a repair specialist myself, I just uh, I decided to go ahead and have a go at it myself and so I looked up the information on the stock units and of course the motors in these things are almost as expensive as the entire machine and knowing that that really wasn't likely the problem, it was most likely just uh, the capacitor in it. I started, I looked up the product manual, found the right capacitor, bought one for about $35 and replaced uh, in the other unit and voila, it worked perfectly fine. But it was not necessarily an easy task as I'm gonna, as I'm gonna show you uh, because these are older units, the capacitor is actually inside of the motor. So I had to hack into it and, and uh, make it work, but it's really actually not that hard. Again, I'm not an electrician and I still was able to pull it off and it works just fine. So I decided uh, because there's no information available online and there's probably thousands of these machines out there on the market that are sitting on shelves somewhere that somebody doesn't know how to fix, this really should be common knowledge and, and something that's relatively easy to do. So I'm gonna show uh, you exactly how I did it on this other one and hopefully we'll get this one rehabbed up and uh, working again real quickly as well. So uh, we'll kind of watch as we go. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove everything off the back of the machine. Okay, so as you can see on the inside of the machine, this is what you see when you get the back off. The motor is all in one piece. The capacitor <coughs> is actually run inside of here. So in order to access the capacitor, you have to get inside of this unit, but it's really tough because uh, it doesn't actually come apart. This grill right here is in the way. So we're gonna have to make a hole and go in through this grill in order to access the wires to be able to pull off. Uh, we're actually gonna end up leaving the capacitor inside and just rerouting it to the outside. So okay, so once we're inside of here, you can see the wires coursing in. Okay, and this all connects to the control board, but then you've got the wires that are inside here. You, you can see a gray wire that goes and it connects into the capacitor over here. So like I said, to be able to actually access the capacitor, which sits right behind this plate, you really can't take off anything else on the outside. If you take out these four screws, um, this housing is still wedged in there to the point where you can't really get into it. So you're gonna have to just make a hole here in order to be able to pull the cables off, the connection points off of that capacitor there and just leave it all intact and that's gonna be plenty sufficient. So that's gonna be what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut right through this grate right here, both sides, in order to make an access point to that. Be careful not to actually cut through any of the wires as you go though. Uh, when you're when you're gr you know grinding away at metal, you don't want to be breathing in any metal fragments or getting it in your eyes or anything. So safety glasses and mask. Don't don't take a risk with it. So we're gonna plug in. We're gonna be using uh, we're gonna be using a high speed Dremel to be able to do this. Uh, it obviously just has a metal a metal cut wheel here. 
So this makes pretty quick work of it, no problem. Make sure you move the wires away so that you don't accidentally cut through those wires as you're going through. So just poke them out of the way using a, a screwdriver or something. Okay, once you break through uh, and you grind through most of that, it actually is pretty easy to get these off. You'll just break them out. So they should actually come out fairly simple. The metal is not the strongest. So you can just break those pieces in half. Be careful, they are gonna be hot. Just like that. Okay, so now that we're on the inside, okay, You've got the wires right here that actually connect to the capacitor. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pair of tweezers or uh, pliers and we're actually going to pull those off of there. Uh, needle nose wires. You can actually see in here with a flashlight. So we're just going to reach in here, we're going to grab these wires, and we are going to work at getting these released off of there. There's one. There's two. Okay, so there's our connection wires. So once we get those, now you'll see that they're actually fished through this top here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work these wires back through here so that I can pull those wires out and get them down and recourse to the outside of the unit itself. Okay, once you have this course, these two wires course outside of this, the next thing you can do is you can just fish those through this same little exit slot as the other wires right here. So we're just going to pinch those right there, up through there, and then what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to put the plate back on that we took off. So that's the next step we're going to do, we're going to replace that plate. Okay, now that we have that all back together and we have our exposed wires here, what we're going to do is we're going to connect it to the capacitor. Okay, the capacitor that I purchased, I uh, just was able to get this off of Amazon. I'll put the specifications based on the manufacturer inside of the, uh, in the description of this video, but just was able to purchase this one off of Amazon for about $11. So obviously this is a very, very cheap fix for a thousand dollar grinder. So we're going to go ahead and connect this up and it's a, it's a non-polar uh, capacitor. You can plug it in either way. Uh, I found it, it to work both ways so it, it doesn't have to be directional. There's no uh, indications on here anywhere as far as which side goes on what, but you're going to see two sets of prongs. So just make sure that you connect one on each set of prongs. Okay, so now that we've got our unit connected, okay, we're going to go ahead and plug it in and we're going to turn it on. I want to throw out a warning right here now. Once we turn the power on, of course, this is a charged unit uh, and the capacitor will actually store a charge as well. So 
At this point, after you do this, you do not want to be touching these prongs and end up getting electrocuted. So, like I said, I'm not an electrician, uh, but uh, I've done this once before and everything worked out perfectly fine and the, and the unit is in use. So we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that everything works now and then we're gonna seal it all back up. Okay, and the last step, uh, once you have everything, I actually rerouted this. There's a hole here that I could run the wires through here to keep the capacitor inside. You may wanna tie this down to the side of the machine just so that if somebody opens it up again, you know, it's not in the way, it's not a, it's not a, a health hazard or anything, you could even tie it up above here um, but either way you want to clean it up and get that out of the way but the last thing is uh, you can't forget when you're testing the machine to make sure that it's working that on the front there's there's the bag switch um, that is actually part of the relay and so the machine will not turn on unless you flip that so you have to close that relay but then you can go ahead and turn on the machine and as you can see it's, work, it's working perfectly fine. So everything now is working as is. Uh, it was a simple $11 capacitor uh, that you could replace off of Amazon and uh, saves you a $1,000 machine. So um, everything else is pretty durable and simple. So most likely this is gonna be the only thing that really has to be switched if the machine does, doesn't uh, happen to go out again. So uh, now that you guys know how to fix it, hopefully that saves you some money as it did me, it saved uh, me a couple thousand dollars on new grinders. So now we have multiple working grinders. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, leave any questions in the comments if you have them.